Well, I'm going to give you about, uh, what do I got, about seven or eight scriptures concerning, remember what I said, I said, okay, we've been dealing with the fear of the Lord. We have to have the fear of the Lord to get anywhere. And we saw that if we have the fear of the Lord, then probably the thing that Satan's going to try and do to remove us from that position is he's going to try and take away our fear. And if he can take away our fear, then you don't have to do what he said. Now, the, the Spirit kind of said to you that you kind of feel like if you fall back into this, this sin, you'll die. Now see, I want to tell you, that's the Lord. Because the Lord, through Adam, told Eve the same thing. You want God to lie to you? You want to go to the doctor and find out you have terminal cancer and have the doctor say, you're all right. Or do you want him to tell you the truth and say, I think we can get it if we operate? Oh, don't operate. Oh, God, don't cut me. Oh, you'd rather die. Well, no. What do I do? Submit. Let the Lord work on you. So, if he can take away your fear and if he can say, oh, Dad, look, it really wasn't God, you won't die. By the way, you think, man, that was a heavy burden I had to carry. Thinking that if I sinned, I'd die. Wow. I'm glad I ain't going to die if I continue to sin. And then here comes the tempter with something that looks a little nicer, a little plumper. Only if you partake of this, it'll make you wise. Make you like God. You have no fear to take it because he didn't mean what he said, that if you took of it, you'd die. He really didn't mean it because the enemy told you he didn't. And after all, he's a nice guy. He wants to give you the world. He wants to give you everything. And so I said that after we started dealing with fear, that we were going to go back into principles of sanctification. Why do you need to separate yourself from brothers who call themselves Christians who are not walking in these principles of sanctification and holiness? Why do you have to separate yourself from them? Why don't, huh? They'll steal your fear. They'll pollute your spirit. They'll say, well, you know, that guy's a little radical down there. You really don't need to walk that way. Well, that's great. I am radical. I, I agree. Okay. Romans, and I'm just going to read a, a, a few things out of Romans 1. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to those who believe it. What? Right? That's right. That's right. And then as you grow older, hopefully, he can reason with you. And hopefully, because you love your dad, you want to do what's right because you love him. Because you value the relationship. That's it. Okay. Romans 1, 16, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God to those who believe. We think the gospel is Jesus died on the cross, say this prayer, and you'll be saved, and everything will be all right. That is no more the gospel than uh, whatever, reading out of Webster's. It's not. It's not. You, as a matter of fact, you get further along in the truth if you read Webster's than if you read that kind of gospel. It's not the gospel. That's not it. Just pray this prayer. Follow me in this prayer. Just pray this prayer. If you pray this prayer, you're out of God. How can you say that? You're speaking for him. I'll tell you the basis of whether you get saved or not is if he hears your prayer and if he responds to it. I can go up to, uh, well, Vic's a businessman. I go up to Vic and I can say, Vic, give me a thousand dollars. I want a thousand dollars. Repeat after me, a thousand dollars. Hey, if he don't give it to me, I don't got it. You can ask God all day long. You can pray to your blue in the face, but until you get sincerely, honestly, deathfully truthful with him, and until you agree that you've missed it. He's right, you're wrong, and you need help. Until you get to that position, I'll tell you what. He ain't listening. He ain't listening. 
So you can get someone to follow you through a prayer, lead someone, someone can lead you through a prayer. But I'll tell you what, the basis of your salvation is not what you say, it's what He does to what you say. He's got to answer you. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. faith. <laughs> Verse 17. As it's written, the just shall live by faith. If you take that word faith, faith and obedience is the same word. The just will live by being obedient to what God shows them to do. That's faith. Faith is obeying. You cannot separate the two words. Verse 18. For the wrath of God. Now, children, do we believe this? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now what does that mean? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against every one of us and everyone on this earth who denies and holds back the truth that God has shown them in their heart. You deny it and you hold it back. That's what it says, pushing it back. If you do that, it says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven to all those who deny the truth that they know to be true in their heart. Now, what is the wrath of God? The wrath of God is not love out time. The wrath of God is withdrawing his presence from your life, withdrawing his grace from your life. Do you want God's grace? Then be obedient. Do you want God's love and power in your life? Then just agree with him. Have something in your heart just a love toward him. And put away the pride of your mind and say, Lord, I've been in religion all my life. I've gone to church all my life. I read the Bible. I'm an intelligent person, but I don't have a relationship with you. I'm being honest with you tonight, Lord. I don't have a relationship with you. So, Lord, do whatever you have to do. I want to know you. Why is that so hard? <laughs> Possibly afraid we're going to lose something. Freedom. Okay. Now, Psalm 50, verse 14, says this. I'll read on down. Now, I want you to keep in your mind everything that follows. I'm going to be giving you principles, and I want you to read these things later on. I'm not going to talk too much on them tonight. I want to give you enough scriptures where you can start taking these things into your heart and realizing what God is trying to say toward you personally and what he's requiring you to do as far as separating yourself from, quote, godly influences that are not bringing you to God. I'm not concerned at this point with your secular influences. Because secularly, you're probably not going to be influenced toward things of God too much anyway. But who you submit your spirit to listen to and obey that are saying, this is the way walk you in it. The people who you are submitting your spirit to obey church-wise, you need to be very careful who you open your spirit and your heart to. That's what I'm talking about. And things that you don't understand, don't throw them out. Just put them on the shelf. Things that you don't understand, don't throw them out. Put them on the shelf. Ask the Lord to show you. Okay. Offer to God thanksgiving. Pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me, the Lord says, in the day of your trouble, and I'll deliver you, and you'll glorify me. Now he's going to talk to the wicked. But to the wicked, God says, what have you to do to declare my statutes? Or that you should take my covenant in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and you cast my words behind you. There are people that are calling themselves Christians that cast your words behind them. I can point the finger to people who have people that have been in their home and living with them and close friends who you shared the Lord with. And they cast your word behind them. But I say, what do you do to those people? What is your position with those people? You let them continue and remain and infect your spirit. 
and you won't make a judgment. I'm not saying to throw them away or kill them, but I'm saying if they cannot receive the word of truth from you, and they don't value your love and the words that you give to them, there comes a time when God says, separate from them, let me work on them through somebody else. Don't feel like you're their savior. And don't be bound to them either. Now here's what happens when we don't separate ourselves. When you see a thief, you consented with him. You've been a partaker with adulterers. Adulterers. I could probably ask for a show of hands. How many of you here know of people in the church that you go to or used to go to and that you used to have fellowship with that were in active sin, knowing sin, and some of them adulterers or fornicators? And I could probably ask you to give me a show of hands to how many of you knew that they were in sin but continued to fellowship. And, and probably, if you'd be honest, I'd, I'd get a lot of hands. No judgment. Oh, God understands. You know, as long as they come to church, that's the main thing. Gosh. And by the very fact that they're coming to church means that they're laying up wrath for themselves. Because, and, and we're giving them the right hand of fellowship, which means we're partakers of their wrath. Sound fun? If they had a communicable disease, you probably wouldn't want to be next to them. Well, I want to tell you, sin, knowingly, saints who are walking knowingly in sin, with no fear of God, they're carrying a contag contagious disease. And they will pollute your spirit. Now, if you haven't gone to them in love, with a true heart, wanting to restore them, then you're guilty. Oh, I couldn't go to them. That'd be judging. That's right. That's what you're to do. You're to go to them. If God opens your eyes to something, you're the one that's supposed to go. If you have a relationship with them, you're the one to go. And share with them in love. Why would you go to them? You wouldn't want to go to them if you hated them. If you hated them, you wouldn't go to them because you know they'd perish in their sin. <laughs> I mean, if I, don't, if I don't love you, I won't tell you anything about telling me before, and I'll just watch you go down the tube. <laughs> Oh, Lord, you showed me, but I'm telling him because I don't like him, Lord. I ain't into him this week. Right down the tube, down the chute. You have given your mouth to evil. Your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. You've done all these things, the Lord says, and I've kept silent. <laughs> and you thought that I was altogether like you. But I will reprove you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. To him that orders his conversation aright, which means to him that orders his life correctly, I'll show the salvation of God. Okay, real quick, I'll go through some of these others. I'll just, Proverbs 24, 24. He that says to the wicked, you are righteous, him shall the people curse, and nations shall abhor him. To them that rebuke him shall be a good delight, and a good blessing from the Lord will come upon them, and everyone shall kiss his lips who gives the right answer. We have to start separating good from evil. He says, if you separate the precious from the vile, you'll be as my mouth. Okay? That was Proverbs 24, 24. Isaiah. Five, twenty. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. Woe to them that put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine, men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, but take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. 
Verse 24, Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble, the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be rottenness, their blossom shall go up as dust. Why? Because they have cast aside the law of the Lord. Verse 25, Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. He has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them. Why? Because there's no judgment. People aren't making any judgment. Okay, Ezekiel 13, 22 says this. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, who I haven't made sad. You've strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Now listen to me. When you tell somebody, when you say, well, your sin's not that bad, it's just not that bad. Well, I know the church I go to doesn't bring me any life, but it's just not that bad. What's going on here is something we call palliation of sin. We palliate sin, and I'm going to give you a definition of that. Palliation of sin. This is what the serpent did to Eve, and this is what is going on in the body of Christ today. And I'll give you a definition of that. I've got some more, just a few more scriptures. Amos chapter 5 says this. Seek the Lord. Seek me and live, verse 4 says. Verse 6 says, seek the Lord and live. Verse 7 says, you who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him. Who's he talking to? He's talking to people that have put judgment aside. He said, look, you who have perverted judgment, leave that off. Seek the Lord. Isaiah said, seek judgment. Seek to know what's right and wrong, light from darkness, black and white, good and evil. We need to know that. Micah chapter 3, verse 1. And I said, here, I pray you, O heads of Jacob. Now he's talking to the leadership. Here, you princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Who hate the good and love the evil? Who eat the flesh of my people? Who flay their skin off of them, break their bones and chop them in pieces? Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he's not going to hear them. He will hide his face from them at that time because they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and they cry, Peace, peace. He that puts not... He... He that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. In other words, God isn't putting peace, peace in his prophet's mouths today. The church has become a harlot of every foul thing, a hole for every viper, a hiding place for every evil, unforgiving, contentious spirit of people who refuse to submit to the word and to the will and to the love of God. The church is a whole for that. Now you might take, you might contend with me on that. You might say, well, that's just not so. Well, I would say, ask the Lord. Go to the Lord and say, Jesus, is this true what this man is saying? Are there people in my church who proclaim to be Christians who don't even know you? Is the backbitings and slanders and contentions and unforgivenesses in my own family personally? How about in your heart? How about taking it one step further? Are there people that you have ought against that you have never gone to? Are there family members that you hate that you've never spoken a word of truth to? Well, the Lord doesn't really care about those things. Well, we'll see. 
Therefore, night shall be unto you. You shall not have a vision. It shall be darkness for you. You shall not be able to discern. The sun will go down over the prophet. The day shall be dark over them. The seers will be ashamed. The diviners will be confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips. So there's no answer from God. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his sins. I'm going to declare unto Jacob his sins, the writer says. Hear this, I pray you, you heads of the house of Jacob, you princes of Israel. Hear this, you that abhor judgment, pervert equity. Hear this. They built up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads there judge for a reward. The priests are on the take. They divide for money. They'll lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? Look at our church. We're prosperous. We have crystal cathedrals. We have 90-foot statues of Jesus. We're prosperous. We're rich. We have no need of anything. Therefore, Zion, for your sake, is going to be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become heaps, a mountain as the houses of the high places of the forest. Now, praise the Lord. Let's go to 2 John and I'll wind it up. I know there's a lot of scriptures and there's been just an awful lot tonight, but it's just the way I, I, we need it. You know, you can't get everything in two nights, granted. But for the men, we've got Tuesday morning, Friday night. You know, and, and um, Tuesday night, open night, Friday or Saturday night, open night. As things go and as we grow, we'll probably be extending the meetings. Second John, verse 4. I rejoice greatly that I found thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech you, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, but that which we've had from the beginning, that we love one another. See this? Put away lying. Speak truth one to another in love for all members one of another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that you have heard from the beginning, that you should walk in. For there are many deceivers who have entered into the world, who confess that Jesus Christ is not coming to flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves. Hear what he's saying. Look to yourselves that you lose not the things which we have wrought in you, but that we receive a full reward. You know what the prophet's saying? You know what John's saying? He's saying, look to yourselves. Hold on to what we taught you, lest we wrought for nothing in your life. Don't let, let no man steal your crown, Paul put it another way. How does a man steal your crown? Because we esteem man over God. We listen to what man says and not God. Get your full reward. Whosoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God, period. Simple, isn't it? Whoever keeps sinning and does not follow along in the teachings of Christ does not have God, period. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Now, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, don't receive them into your house, neither say to them, well, God bless you. For he that bids him God speak is a partaker of his evil deeds. Do you know what partaker means? Communion fellowship. It means you have just received of their spirit. Third John, verse 5, Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do to the brethren and strangers, which you have borne witness of, and which have borne witness of your love before the church. If you bring these type of people, if you bring forward those, the faithful brethren, and you bring in strangers, and you're faithful to do that. 
and forward on their journey after a godly sort, you shall do well. Because for his name's sake, they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. He's talking about the ministers of the gospel. They went forward taking nothing from the Gentiles. He says, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. When you give to a ministry that's proclaiming a standard and lifting up the standard of righteousness, when you give money to that, when you fellowship that, when you pray for that ministry, when you partake of that ministry, you become a fellow helper of the truth and you get a blessing from God. That's right. Only this, well, no. <laughs> the, soul, the seed that's sown to the work of the devil will reap a tear. A tear will come forth. Look at verse 11. Beloved, don't follow that which is evil, but that which is good. He that does good is of God. He that does evil has not seen God. You know, I love the epistles of John because he is so simple. He says, let me tell you like this. If someone comes to you and says they love God and they hate their brother, he's a liar. You don't have to listen to him. I mean, that's deep, isn't it? Isn't that heavy? Isn't that, isn't that searching? Isn't that real deep? Someone comes to you and says they love God, but they hate their brother. He's a liar. Because how can he say he loves God, hates his brother? How can he do that? For God says if you love God, you'll love your brother. A lot of stuff. Now, what is palliation of sin? Yes. Palliation of sin. It's P A 